everybody. Uh, welcome back to our channel. If you are joining us for the first time today, Sabup will be going live every Tuesday and Friday at 9.30 a.m. PST. During these difficult times, we want to make sure we're here for you as much as possible and are constantly trying new ways to support your needs. For example, today's episode is going to be about test anxiety. And we have all experienced this at some point in our lives, and it's also a common concern among some of our test takers. So we decided we're going to have an entire episode on this. If you missed our previous episode, uh, we had two of our self-help experts uh, answer your questions about uh, the self-help test. So if you missed that out, um, there's a description in the link below for you to watch it once you're done with this video. I would also like to take a second and remind you about your transfer policy, about our transfer policy changes. Um, like if you had scheduled a test anytime between March 20th and April 16th, you can now reschedule your test for another day. In just three steps, you will be able to write your test as soon as our uh, service resumes. First, you'll have to go into your self account on our website. Second, under the heading Upcoming Test, click Actions and then click Transfer to a different sitting. You will then be able to transfer your test to your preferred date, time, and location. Follow all prompted steps and click Place Order to complete the transfer. Please do not worry, this is free of charge, so when you do place an order, you will not be charged for anything. Okay, great. Now that that's done, um, Oh, wait, before we begin the show, um, I was re-watching a few of our episodes and I realized I haven't had a chance to introduce myself properly. So my name is Ashwati and as many of you may have guessed, I was born in India. I speak five different languages, four of which are Indian. And I grew up uh, in different parts of the world, but now I live here in Vancouver with my family. Um, I actually came to Vancouver through the U.S., um, and I came here by the Express Entry Program, which, of course, I'm sure you all know. Um, and that's kind of the reason I'm doing these live streams, because I understand that um, many of you would be facing challenges that I did too, um, in terms of language, in terms of immigration, um, one of which is test anxiety. Um, I still do have a, uh, anxiety when I write tests, and I'm really glad that uh, today we have our expert here to help us out. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Mike Atkinson, uh, an associate professor of psychology and a teaching fellow at Western University. Hi, Dr. Mike. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to our viewers um, and answering their questions. To start off, can you tell us and our viewers a little bit about your professional experience? Sure. Hi. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me today. Um, I've been teaching at uh, Western for a long time, uh, maybe over 34 years now, and uh, I teach introductory psychology, and um, over that time I've taught a lot of students, and I think I mentioned to uh, the panel earlier that, um, in fact, by this time I've actually taught 35,000 students, and um, so that's a lot of people. Um, I've also taught um, at uh, the Faculty of Ed um, in the uh, English as Second Language program. Uh, I teach psychology there as well. And uh, so I've been in and out for all of those kinds of things. So with all of those students and uh, taking psychology in particular, um, I have seen a lot of people with test anxiety. So hopefully I can answer some of those questions for you. Wonderful. That's great. And especially since you're talking about having taught so many students um, and you just mentioned that you are familiar with the struggles, uh, what can you tell us about um, the subject in general, and if there are anything, if there's anything we can do to mitigate the situation. Sure. Uh, people often think that you know, like test anxiety is some special thing, uh, but it isn't really. It's just a type of performance anxiety. And many people experience this. Like anytime you're going to like, uh, play a game, um, if you're going to give a speech, if you're going to do a performance, people start feeling this uncomfortable feeling that might be an uh, increase in heart rate, increase in blood pressure, butterflies in the stomach, all of that kind of stuff. And that's just because you now are going on, on, and you're on stage, and you're in front of people, and that's the anxiety that you're feeling. Test anxiety is no different. It's just a, a specific to the test that people are taking in that particular way. And the last thing I want to say about that, uh, before we get to some of the questions, is that you might think that this is a bad thing, but it's not. 
you need some anxiety, you need some arousal in order to get through everything properly. You talk to um, a lot of um, people who perform regularly, they'll tell you that they need that, that, that arousal jag just before they get on stage because that what's, that's what brings them up to uh, the best that they can possibly be. So my general rule to you is going to be don't worry about this too much. It's actually helping you. You just need to learn how to control it. Oh, that is great advice for me too, personally. So I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, in anticipation of this session, we asked a couple of our test takers to send in their videos uh, for any, with any questions they have. So I will play the first one here. This one is from Larissa. Hi, thanks for answering my question. Well, I have anxiety and I tend to be very nervous minutes before the exam starts. Do you have any tip to help me handle with this little, like last minute panic attack? Thank you. So if you missed that out, what Larissa was asking is what can, what can she do to help her last minute panic issues? Usually when she goes into a test, just a couple of minutes before it starts, she starts getting extremely anxious and panicky. So if there's any way to circumvent that. Sure. Uh, and again, a lot of people are going to experience exactly that kind of thing. Um, the two things that I think are really good that you can do at that point is just stop for a second, slow down, and start breathing. So you breathe like very slowly and normally, just focus on, it's almost like a Zen thing. You breathe in a little bit, and that helps you calm down. If you're still like needing something to focus on, uh, one thing I do a lot is I carry a bottle of water with me before I ever go on stage or do anything. And um, I'm always taking the water. It, it actually helps you talk for one thing. Uh, but in addition to that, you focus on drinking water. And it just slows you down, makes you kind of calm. That's what you want to focus on. Many people in, in, in that last minute kind of frustration start thinking about, do I know this? Do I know that? Stop thinking about that. Yeah, you do know that. You do know the answers. You prepared properly. And so you just need to focus on calming your body down. That's, that's really the biggest thing there. Oh. Um, that's a good tip, and that will kind of like that gives me a good segue into going to our next question. Sure. Um, how do we kind of extend that into the test? So when we're we are all well aware of the time pressure, and that there is a countdown timer. So how do we remain patient and perform well? This question was actually asked by one of our followers on Instagram, Himani. I hope you're here with us. But if you aren't, please watch this video, and you will be able to get your answers. Okay, thanks, Anani, and ever, anybody else who might uh, want to get the answer to that. Uh, here, here's what I think is a really good thing to do. You're going to go into the test, and before you even get there, start thinking about how you're going to put, you know, divide up your time. And uh, so if it's a time-monitored um, thing, which it's going to be, think about where do I need to be half an hour into this test? Where do I need to be 10 minutes into this test? And so that you're not constantly asking yourself, am I doing okay and checking the time? But if you've figured that, you know, by 10 minutes in, I should be at this particular point, and you look and see where you are, you're probably either there or ahead of it at that time. And so I think that doing that in, uh, as you're taking the test is going to help a lot. Uh, the other thing that's very good in taking tests, by the way, is um, don't, don't get hung up on, on individual questions for too long. So if you're there and you don't know the answer to a question or you're struggling with it, uh, don't spend a lot of time on that one. Uh, try to come back to it if you can, uh, but um, go on and face the new challenge and the, new, the rest of the test first. You can always re-answer that question. You can always come back. But uh, sometimes I've seen students who are struggling with the question and you know, spend five, ten minutes on the question. And you know, now they're stuck because their timer is gone now. So always do that. Have, have an idea of where you're going to be and don't get stuck on any particular question. Sorry, guys, I was on mute there. Um, great, thank you so much. Um, now, like, since you've mentioned about like skipping questions, let's say that you do have to skip a couple of questions and then that affects the test entirely. How mm -hmm. does one motivate themselves to write the test yet again, knowing that they've not been able to achieve their desired scores the last time? The first time around? Mm -hmm. Well, there's something that's very important for people to remember, and that is that not all of us get 90% on an, an exam or a test every time we write it. Not all of us get 70%.
sometimes what we're doing is we're looking to see where we are. And you got to think, um, like, how, how well did I actually do? And, you know, in realistic terms. And so be thinking about that. I mean, the problem, of course, if you've done really, really poorly, then there's a different thing that we might have to talk about. But in fact, what, what happens a lot is people think that they haven't done as well as they should have, when in fact, they probably are almost there to begin with. And so now when you come back to the test, it's not so much like I'm starting over again. It's more like I'm just trying to get above that little level that I need to get at. And you'll probably be fine for that. Uh, as I said, if you unfortunately bomb the test completely, um, then we got to start and say, uh, maybe we need to talk about how to prepare for that better. Oh, baby steps, I think baby is steps. what you're saying. Very, very good. It sounds great. Um, and in terms of like preparing for the test, maybe like you're talking about like baby steps and like, and knowing that we're probably a little, we're going to be struggling a little bit. How do, and this is something that I personally have an issue with as well. How do I prevent a high stakes test like this scaring me into procrastination? Usually I'm always leaving preparation to the last minute. So, okay. you know, is there anything that I can tell myself to start preparing early? Sure. So a cu couple of things there. Um, one is, as you said right there, you got to start preparing early. Uh, don't try to cram it. Don't try to do it the night before. That, that's not going to work, and everybody knows that. So let's not do that. So as you're starting to get ready for a test, I, want, I would like people to do things. Again, I'm going to use your baby steps analogy. Take things slower. Don't, don't sit down and say, I'm going to study for this test for five hours tonight. You know you're not going to do it. I know you're not going to do it. It ain't going to happen. So instead, say, okay, I'm going to study for this test for an hour tonight or, you know, whatever time frame you want to put on, but put a small, uh, manageable time frame. And then if you do it, fantastic, you've succeeded there. And if you want to do more, you can go beyond that. But start with that small kind of thing first. Uh, the other thing that I'd like people to think about is um, once you've prepared for that test and now you're going to write it, one thing I'd like you to do is go to sleep the night before because you don't want to be trying to cram up into the last possible minute, which a lot of people do. Actually, there's a lot of data that shows that if you start you know, getting yourself together and get a good sleep before a test, you're going to do better than if you try to cram all the way in. And maybe more importantly, you'll actually remember it for a longer time. So get yourself together, do those small things first, and then get some sleep. Okay, great. Um, thank you for that. We're sure. now going to play another video question from one of our um, followers on Instagram, I think. I'm not sure. Um, but this is a question from Martha. So I would like to play the video now. Hi, my name is Martha. Sometimes when I'm preparing for the test, my mind goes completely blank. And I don't know what to do if this happens during the test. Do you have any advice considering that we have limited time to get back to it? Thank you. Okay, so uh, if you didn't hear Martha, she asked uh, if there were any tips to clear her head when she blanks out during a test. Well, during a test? Yes. Okay. So that, uh, you know, people do that a lot, by the way. And um, it's sort of like most of the time when people blank out, it's because they're over-focusing on the answer to that question. And uh, it's kind of like um, it, it, even if you're not in the test, you're trying to remember something. The harder you try to think about it, the harder it is to actually remember it. And so what you have to do at that time is say, okay, stop. I, and again, do the, do the breathing thing, do the water thing, clear your mind a little bit. If you have to come back to that question right then, at least give yourself some time to come back to it with a, a, a clearer head. Um, again, that's where I'm going to recommend. Go beyond that question. Come back later. Because um, if, you're, if you're stuck on the question, and you're blanking on it, you're going to keep doing that if you try to port, force yourself to do it. Okay. That's a good tip. Um, thank you so much. We actually have two more questions sure. uh, here. Um, again, thank you so much for your time. You're um, Okay, this is a slightly long question. Uh, my knowledge of the English language is pretty good. I do not have any issues speaking or writing on a day-to-day -day basis. However, when I'm being tested, I make grammar and pronunciation mistakes I wouldn't normally make. I don't know if this is a symptom of anxiety, um, but if so, what can I do, be do to better demonstrate my grasp of the English language? 
Okay, let me answer the last part of there, the, the middle part of that. Is that a symptom of anxiety? Yeah, actually it is. Uh, when people get anxious or when their arousal goes in, um, they kind of uh, default to something I'll call your dominant reaction. And um, if English is not your first language, and your dominant reaction is probably not English in that situation. And so, right, so then that's where you start messing up and that kind of thing. So the key to dealing with that is, tr again, control the arousal. Because it's the arousal. It's not the other stuff that's a problem. It's the arousal. Control the arousal, and then everything else will be fine. And so I think that um, that individual will be able to demonstrate how much they know about English and grammar and all of that stuff if they can keep, uh, remain calm and keep that arousal level down. That is a great tip. I had no idea about the dominant thing that you were talking about. It makes sense. Um, we, we do that all the time. I mean, I'll give another good example is uh, when people are, um, you know, playing, let's say you're playing pool or you're playing a sport or whatever. Um, if you're really, really good at it and somebody's uh, giving you arousal because they're watching, uh, you'll do better at it. If you're not so good at it or even moderately good at it, if somebody's watching you, you'll actually do worse because the arousal gets you to focus on things that you shouldn't be focusing on. So oh. control the arousal. You're absolutely right. That is suddenly everything, all the puzzles are fitting in the right place and everything is making sense to me. <laughs> so thank you. Um, okay, I'm going to quickly go ask a question. This is also slightly a long one, but it's a very uh, pertinent one to our current situation. Um, during this time of social distancing, I have more time to prepare for my tests at home, but I am so anxious that I can't seem to focus on anything. Every day feels like the day before, and I have difficulty, excuse me, I have difficulty getting into a study routine. Do you have any advice on how to deal with this conflict? That's a really, really you know, timely question. It's also a very hard one to uh, kind, of, kind of answer. Uh, what I'm going to suggest to you is that the kind of thing that somebody's experiencing there is not just anxiety for testing. It's a stress reaction. And so when we have stressors um, of the kind that we're under right now, uh, people have difficulty planning things, they have difficulty organizing, they have difficulty uh, moving their life along. And so several things that I think that you can do might help. One is literally take a piece of uh, pen and paper or a pencil or whatever and, and, and put a list of, of the things that you think you need to do. And it's almost like checking them off, um, you know, like a to-do list. Uh, but you can think about that when you have time and then say, okay, I got to do the to-do list. I don't have to worry about planning it. I've already done that. So that part can help you there. And that might be a good thing to do. The other thing that's um, very, very useful for stress is to remember that um, we can't control everything. And so what you have to do is you have to learn how to control what you can and figure out how to live with the rest. And there are many things that you can control. Control can actually be something that's ultra good for stress reduction. And that could be little things about controlling, such as I know where I'm going to study. I know where I'm going to sit down. I, I can change whether it's 1 o'clock or 1.30 when I do this thing. And just doing something simple like that gives you control over the situation. The stress will actually decrease. Amazing. I feel like that suggestion works for just everybody, not just yeah. for the test, but a lot of us are working from home. So, you know, this is a great tip for everybody. But uh, we've come to the end of our questions, uh, and again, I'm really, really glad to have spoken to you today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure all of our viewers, I can see below, um, really appreciate your input. Um, again, thank you so much. You're welcome. Goodbye, everybody, and please stay well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, I thought that was really helpful. I mean, what did you think? If you, I feel like these are things that you know, you kind of know at the back of your head, but when somebody actually says it, it like the ball drops and you're like, oh my God, this is what this is. Uh, everything is so much clearer. Um, if that did make sense to you, what I'm saying, and if this would, like, you know, the session was informative to you, please like, uh, like this session so that a lot of other people can benefit from it. Um, this is for testing. This is for any kind of testing. So please do uh, let us know if you liked it. And if you do want to suggest something else that uh, you would like to be addressed, also comment below and we will try to make sure that happens. Um, now, 
Another thing that I wanted to tell you is that if you, like you saw the videos here, if you would like to send in your questions via videos, please send it to communications at paragontesting.ca. That email is mentioned in the link below. Um, send in your videos. It doesn't matter if it's horizontal, vertical, if half your face is cut off. As long as it's audible, we will publish it. Uh, I mean, sorry, we'll show it. Um, but thank you so much. Um, again, now Dr. Mike has explained what causes test anxiety and how we can either prevent it or minimize its effects on our test day braces. But we also have a familiar face here joining us today to share their insights on this topic. Hi, Brandy. Hi, Ashwadi. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Very well, thank you. I really appreciated learning uh, a lot of the strategies there from Dr. Mike. I think they're very helpful for any test taker. So mm -hmm. I appreciate his time. I like, I enjoyed it too, as you can clearly see from my face. Um, but I want to ask you if there are any strategies that our test takers can use to prepare for the Selkirk test, especially, and on the test day itself, uh, that will help them stay focused and perform well. Absolutely, yes. So the best strategy I can offer as you're starting to prepare for the cell pit test specifically is know before you go. So we have to have a firm understanding about the content of the test and how it's structured and formatted before you even start working on your English skills. So our cell pit test will assess the areas of language, including listening, reading, writing, and speaking. So we do need to make sure that we plan daily little segments of practice to focus in on each area. We also need to know how we're going to be scored on each particular test that we do. So on the cell pit test specifically, the highest score that anybody can earn is a level 12. That being said, not everybody needs to score a level 12 for the purposes in which they're taking this test. So I think I would really encourage all of our test takers out there to firmly understand what it is they're taking this test for so is it for permanent residency? Is it for uh, employment uh, to show proof of our language of, uh, proficiency? And then set yourself a goal for the level that you're wanting to achieve. We get lost at questions from test takers saying, how do I get level 12? How do I get level 12? And our answer is you, you probably don't need to get a level 12. It would be nice, but it's not absolutely necessary. So by making our own goals realistic, we, we sort of cut our stress levels in half as we're entering into this test. Um, knowing how this test is scored is also key. So there are four different dimensions that all of the raters will be looking at when you're doing your reading, or sorry, your uh, speaking responses, and when you're uh, submitting your writing responses. So again, perfection isn't necessary. I know Dr. Mike spoke to that. We don't have to be perfect. We don't have to get that 100%. So uh, maybe your pronunciation isn't as strong as you would like, but provided you've got some very solid ideas and you're able to develop and support those with lots of descriptive details, it's okay that your pronunciation maybe isn't perfect. You still will be able to, uh, to have some success on the test. So really looking at your strengths is key. We have to know what our, our weaknesses are because that's where we want to practice so we can develop those skills. But please don't forget about your strengths too. We all have them and it's really important to acknowledge that, that we do have some foundational skills as we enter into the, uh, to the test. So please do, uh, we've got lots of webinars available. Uh, in fact, we'll be offering our CellPIP introductory webinar just next week on Tuesday, I'll be delivering that. So if you want to learn more about how the test is formatted and uh, which skills specifically you need to work on to earn, uh, to, to earn a level score, then please do tune in for that. So it's, it's the pre-preparation before you start studying. I think that is going to set you up for success as you keep going. Uh, Randy, I just wanted to, like, I know you touched on this a little bit in the beginning, um, but one of our uh, test stickers here has, has asked us a question about uh, the English language. Essentially, their question is if they are, um, if, they're, if English is their first language, do they still have to prepare for the self of test? Absolutely, yes. So regardless of whether English is your first, second, third, or eighth language, everybody should be preparing. Uh, everybody needs to know how the test is formatted, what the content is, and how it's going to be scored uh, before you start preparing. That's how you're going to maximize your own success. I think a lot of our stress, I can speak from my own experience, and perhaps you can relate, but I think a lot of stress happens in the moment when we're caught unprepared. So it is more common for those of us who speak English as our first language to go into this thinking, I can answer any question that comes my way, I've got the vocabulary to handle it, and I'll be fine. 
um, you know, we can be the best public speakers in the whole wide world. And all of a sudden, when the cell pit test says to you, you've got one minute to record a well-organized response to this question, go. It is difficult to, uh, to speak for exactly that length of time to introduce your topic, develop it, and wrap it up within that time limit. Um, so without practice at home, regardless of our language skills, we, we might be caught unaware if we didn't practice that at home. So I think some of our study habits and some of our routines, as Dr. Mike was suggesting, uh, we really need to look at uh, setting aside, I would suggest, a regular time each day. We don't want to cram. That's the worst thing we can do. So if we're practicing for an hour a day and we set little baby steps, to use your term you mentioned earlier, so maybe we're focusing on speaking for the next few days. So you set aside an hour tomorrow and you're going to um, practice authentically, just like the test would assess you. You're going to set a timer. You're going to think about your answer for 30 seconds. You'll then record your voice speaking for a full minute and play it back to see how well you connected your ideas. So everybody, please, first language speakers or second language learners, it's really important to practice at home under these authentic test uh, recreations. So when you get into the testing center, you'll be a pro. <laughs> you'll have a lot more confidence anyways, and you'll, you'll know what it feels like to be able to speak for that length of time. And I think having that bout of confidence behind you as you enter the test will certainly um, mitigate any stress. You know, it, it'll be natural to be nervous on a test. We all get nervous. And again, as Dr. Mike says, that those nervous butterflies we feel in our stomach are helpful in the sense that it shows you you really care about the outcome and it can push us to be focused and alert and to, to try our best. Um, but we don't want to be so scared that we freeze on the test. So again, by practicing at home under authentic conditions, you'll really cut that stress level down by the time it actually takes to get into the test center and perform under those same conditions. Great. Um, so since you're talking about um, getting into the test and being nervous on the test day, is there anything that we can do to make sure that on the test day we don't feel as nervous as we are uh, or we're like, you know, trying to control our nervousness? Yes. So again, we've had personal stories from test takers sharing their stressful experiences. Uh, I spoke to a fellow not long ago who had driven three and a half hours to the nearest test center to take his test. And lo and behold, he gets to the center and he's forgotten all of his documents at home. So he, he could not take the test that day. So uh, talk about stress level through the roof. That's probably the worst case scenario. So make it easy on yourself. Um, pack, pack your bag or your, your ladies, your purse, your backpacks the night before the test. Assemble all the documents that you're going to need. If you've got any study notes that you've made during your preparation, you can include those in your, in your bags as well. And while you're waiting for the test to begin, once you're sitting in the lobby, you can quickly read over your to-do list and your study notes, and you'll be uh, more focused for the test. I think um, if we rush out the door the morning of the test, when we're already feeling nervous, uh, we're more likely to forget things that we need if we're not properly prepared. So again, pack your bag, leave it at the front door the night before. It's really important, as Dr. Mike says, to take care of ourselves. Uh, we do need to get a good night's sleep all the time, really, but particularly the night before the test. It's really important to get those seven or eight hours of sleep, I think. we uh, Not everybody eats a breakfast, I realize that. But we have to remember that the test sitting is three hours long and there are no breaks. So it's really important to eat um, a filling and nutritional breakfast the morning of. Because if you're hungry in the middle of the test, you're not going to be able to focus as well. So it's all these little tiny things that we know enough to do anyway when we really think about it, but we have to put that plan into action and make sure we're taking care of ourselves. Um, some people relax too by listening to music. I have read some, some psychological articles recently that suggest that um, laughter and music are two surefire ways to really calm an anxious mind. So perhaps if you're driving to the test center, you can play some whatever your favorite music is uh, to kind of set a, a comfortable background. Um, talk to a family member the, the day of the test, um, study with your friends and wish each other well, support each other and encourage each other. And that kind of extra positive boost um, hopefully will support you as you're going into the test to help you be proud of your accomplishments and do your best. I think what you just said makes sense to me right now because I know I crack a lot of really silly jokes when I'm anxious and I think it's just me trying to like make myself laugh or feel like, you know, feel better. So yeah, thank you for that tip. Learning so much today, by the way. 
But yeah, thank you, Randy, for joining us here today as well. Um, and I know I mentioned this before, and Randy, you think that too, that today's episode was so informative. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that you joined us here today, and I'm really kind of happy that this episode is out there for people to watch and get to know. Excellent. Yes. Thanks for having me back, Ashwadi. Um, we'll be back Tuesday morning then, I guess. You'll see me next <laughs> Tuesday oh, morning, yes. next week um, to answer some more questions about your cell pit test. So thanks, everyone. Stay healthy, stay well, and have a calm mind as you enter into this weekend. Happy Friday, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay, great. Um, again, I want to say that if you like this video and if you found it informative, please do like us and please let us know what more you want to know um, and hear us talk about. Always the comment section is open for this. Um, I want to now talk about next week. Brandy did mention this a little bit when she was uh, here with us. We have a few exciting things for you lined up next, uh, next Tuesday, which is April 7th. Um, we're again joined by Brandy and Megan and hopefully Megan's cats. And they're always very eager to meet you and answer your questions. Uh, we are taking any questions you have about the self hook test. We will be focusing a little bit more in the reading and the listening section because we spoke about speaking and writing in the last one. So if you have any questions about reading, uh, listening, or just anything about the self hook test, send it to us um, either via, via a video to communications at paragontesting.ca, or you can also send it to us on um, on the comments here below. Um, I will tell you that um, our social media channels are always open for you to send us any questions you have. All important updates will be posted first on Instagram or on Facebook. Um, and it is also a really good place for you to ask your questions. So if you can't make it to our live sessions on time, and I hope you do, but if you can, uh, you can see, uh, you can always ask your questions uh, on our Instagram account and our Facebook account. You can see that uh, they're there on the screen in front of you. Please do also consider following us um, there as well. We have a lot of great content for you. And now, before I say bye to you guys, I want to quickly remind you that we have plenty of free and discounted preparation materials for you all. I meant to mention this earlier in the beginning of the show, but I was really excited. Uh, to talk to Dr. Mike, so it kind of just went away from my head. But I'm here to explain it to you again. We have plenty of free and um, discounted prep materials. South of Accelerate um, is now free for you, and um, you can use that to kind of prep at this time that you have. And then we also have a lot of practice tests that are half off, and you can find all these on our website, www.southpip.ca. But don't worry, there is a link in the description below for you. So please, please do access, uh, access those products. They are for now available only till April 15th. So I would get there as fast as I can. And as always, I thank you for joining us. And I ask that you subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to get um, timely notifications. Um, but as always, thank you so much for joining us. And please take care and wash your hands. Bye.